Uh, it's Chef Trilly here at Heart and Soul, the hottest, newest soul food spot here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. 4808 Randall Street, Sweet One One One. Welcome to Jarrell's Journal, episode 44. Today we're coast to coast. I got my LA California connection. This is my homegirl. Uh, we met on a networking, a sports networking uh conference, and is instant connection, man. We have so much in com- uh, common. Uh today we're going to be talking about the transition for athletes, life after sports. And she is the founder of the rebranded athlete. Today we have on Dr. Sarah Lepe. And I want you to give her uh, a round of applause, make some noise. All my replay viewers, make some noise for her and plug in her. Check her out on IG under Dr. Sarah Lepe, Lepe uh, the rebranded athlete, and also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and everything else. But without further ado, help me welcome her to the video, Dr. Sarah Lepe. Lepe. <laughs> you got it right, Jarrell. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I have to say it like two or three times. <laughs> it's all good. I have no. F- I have all the faith in you. By the end of the episode, you'll have it down. No worries. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's always good to see your face. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jarrell. How about yourself? Doing good. I, I uh, once again, I know that weather out there in Cal. I'm jealous, actually. You're living out there in <laughs> LA uh, in that beautiful weather. Yes, that's why we pay such high prices out here to <laughs> have that weather all year round. But yeah, th- things are going good. And, um, you know, thank you for the introduction. I know you and I had connected earlier in the year. And like you said, just hit it off right away. I knew we had a lot in common. I just didn't know how much we had in common yeah. until we actually started talking. <laughs> so let me just tell you guys that are watching. We are actually uh, alumni of Concordia University. Uh, we're both uh, educators in our sense. And then we have, have the athletic, um, you know, component as well. But we met through uh, sports networking and it's been phenomenal. So it's always great to meet like minds and, you know, assist one another in uh, their endeavors. 
But I have a question for you. How you been holding up during this pandemic? I ask everyone that because this is something we've never experienced before. You know, it's it's one of those things as I kind of reflect back to, I think we can come out of this two two ways. You know, you could be as, you know, as afraid and messed up in the beginning of the pandemic and still be that way now. Or as I saw it as an opportunity to kind of pause, you know, I was a busy school principal at the time. I really didn't have a moment to um, reflect on me. And, and ultimately, I came out as a winner at the end because that's how rebranded athlete was born <laughs> so yeah. this was my covid project um that <laughs> the idea had just sparked right before covid had happened and i couldn't stop thinking about it and i knew that this was something that i wanted to pursue yeah that is awesome and real quick for my viewers who don't know who you are and they need to get familiar with you like asap could you give us just a little background of uh, or description of your background where you from uh where you uh played athletics at as far as high school and collegiate uh things like that sure yeah so i grew up in southern california so i'm a california girl in a, a small town city of oxnard and i went on for a full athletic volleyball scholarship to play at cal state fullerton I was there actually for five years. I was a super senior, blew out my knee my freshman year. And as I began to finish up my sport, I really didn't have the option of going to play professionally because I had some injuries that would have prevented me from going pro to the next level. So I decided to go with what I went to school for, which was be, to be a teacher. Um, I definitely had some hiccups along the way. It was not by any means a smooth transition out. It in fact took me about six years to get where I needed to be within my career. And through that time, I really lost my identity because um, I was always Sarah, the volleyball player, and I didn't know what to do without my sport now and try to really f see where I fit in, in the world and you know what community and what people I could surround myself with because things were different. I always had my teammates, I always had my coaches, and then all of a sudden that was gone. So um, I moved up the ranks pretty quickly in education. As soon as I finally did get my own classroom within five years, I became an assistant principal. And the reason for that is because I always wanted to make a difference at a bigger level and make a bigger impact. And within three years of being an assistant principal, I took the leap of faith and went and had my own school site as well and had a great time. I really did learn a lot. And I, I noticed right away that I was very different because of the athletic background and experience. So um, I've recently, I decided to go all in on rebranded athlete because this is something I'm very passionate about. And I know that had it not been for athletics, I wouldn't have had all the success in my career and in my life. And so I'm, you know, really looking to help other athletes transition, whether they're collegiate athletes or professional, because there's a place for everybody in the world. And we just have to find, you know, where athletes need to be. Yeah. Well, so I appreciate that. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I appreciate you highlighting that because you and I can't be the only athletes that haven't went on to professional level and thought to ourselves, look, we train all these years, all of our life. Right. And then it's like the what what to do next? What should I do next? You know what I mean? Right. So I yeah. really appreciate you highlighting that and explaining that as well. And for any uh, viewers that are on, if you have any questions for Dr. Lepe, please put it in the uh, <laughs> comments below and we'll be able to address it. So, Doc, I have a question for you. I'm going to highlight on some of the things you just talked about with your background. But when you were in co college uh, playing volleyball, did you have a already have in your mind you want to go into education or did you have plans to do something otherwise and education was just your backup plan and, you know, uh, as far as, you know, this, you know, I know this is a safe route. This is what I do yeah. not fall back on. Yeah, great question. So actually going into Fullerton, I declared my major in kinesiology. Um, I had thought that afterwards I wanted to either, um, you know, do something around athletics. And um, I thought at the time I was going to be a physical therapist or an athletic trainer. And when I blew out my ACL my freshman year, I spent a lot of time in that training room. And let me tell you, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> this is not this is not for me. You know, this is not what I want to sign up for. So I went back to plan B. And I think plan B was the safe route for me because I grew up with a family of educators. So my dad was a school principal. So was my aunt. I had always been around the school system. So that was kind of like second nature for me. And I was like, well, I guess, you know, I'll go, I'll go into teaching. And so um, 
it was something that was natural for me. I, I think looking back now, um, I have like zero regrets of where it landed me in my path, but just like any athlete now, it's like we are only accustomed to our sport and what we're around because we're not exposed to other things. And so, you know, I guess my biggest takeaway or piece of advice too would be, you know, go and explore things that you don't know about because there's so many other things that this world has to offer as well. And I'll tell you, Jarell, business was never on my radar. I remember saying, I'm never going to own my own business or do any of this or that. And I just, you know, the, the last couple of years, I ate my words again yeah. <laughs> and said something I said I would never do, I ended up doing. And, you know, in the process, you learn so much, not only about what you're pursuing, but yourself. And so, yeah, that's, mm. um, it was plan B. And like I said, no regrets because it's, you know, landed me to where I was at and, and even the impact of what I was able to do during my time as an educator. You know, I feel like I've left my my mark there, but there are other things, you know, out there waiting for me to, you know, be be in front of and to help out with as well, too. That's awesome. And I was trying to think of the other connection we had. It was the KT major. We're both kinesiology mm. there or kinesiology majors. Uh, so yeah. shout out to all my KT people out there. <laughs> PT people. Uh, but that is awesome. Um, and you really touched on a lot of important things as well. And I want to come back and touch on that. Uh, but before I want to ask you about resources, why you were in school at Cal. Um, were there any resources during your collegiate time with your athletic program that really stood out to you that helped you while you were still a student athlete as far as finding, you know, what you want to do after school? you know, during the time I went there, there really wasn't anything. And that's what kind of led me back to this path, you know, during COVID when I had time to reflect, like, what when was the most challenging time in my life? And it was that transition out. And because I was that fifth year senior, I had that extra semester in the springtime where I didn't have volleyball any longer. I only had to take a couple classes because I had enough classes to graduate with. And that's when I first really began to get a taste of what that transition was going to look like. And I didn't take it well. You know, I, I, I masked it, I covered it up by going out and partying, you know, drinking and all kinds of stuff and just, you know, trying to, trying to really put my feelings aside because I didn't know how to express what I was feeling. And at the time I felt like I was the only one going through it, even though there were two other seniors on the team, you know, they already had what they were going to figure out with their lives. And I, I felt like I was the only one, even though I knew that I was going to go and be a teacher, but I really didn't know what my future was going to be like without athletics anymore. And so the conversations that were happening with coaches, we really didn't talk about that. Like I rem I remember our senior banquet very vividly, you know, we gave our speeches, everybody, you know, roasted us and did all kinds of stuff and gave our jersey to us in a frame and said, thank you very much for your service. And that was it, you know, and it's, and it's a shame because, you know, there's so many, there's so many things that you can take away with the sport and apply to life, but yeah. you need the guidance with that. And that's what I, I really think is missing because as an athlete, you spend all your time on the court, the field, the pool, wherever you've been, and you haven't had that quote unquote, like work mm -hmm. experience because you haven't been able to have the internships. And even for me, the work experience I had was like summertime jobs. Cause I needed some cash in my pocket, you know, yeah. but <laughs> it wasn't really it wasn't really that experience that was going to count towards the work experience aspect so i think really helping athletes see you know the skill set that they have as an athlete and how it transfers over and and in fact in my opinion i think we come with a better skill set than somebody who had all that time to be doing that internship because we have learned something that is on the court or field that you are not going to get in a textbook and you're not going to get from just a job experience yeah, absolutely. Right. And then a lot of things in the textbook, you can't apply and it doesn't work. And you learn it doesn't work in the field until right. you're actually in the field, you know, doing what you're doing. But you highlighted something else while you were uh, speaking. What's your reception been with rebranded athlete as far as being able to understand that you're not the only one going through that certain circumstance of feeling alone when transitioning out? Because you, like you said, uh, a lot of us feel like we're alone of no one experienced the, the, mm -hmm. the trauma or difficulties that we're going through ourselves. But you're highlighting this with your podcast and with your business. What does that reception been for people to, you know, hear other uh, stories and others experience and, you know, uh, get, you know, tutelage and guidance from you? 
Yeah, well, I can tell you, people who have been out of the game 5, 10, 15, 20 years, everybody has said this is exactly what I needed, you know, or what I should have had during my transition. So with that sense, you know, it's it's been I, I've been very humbled by it, you know, especially by former teammates of mine and, you know, people that I went to school with, because this ultimately is something that we all wish we would have had. And it's a little bit harder for the ones who are in it currently, because just like me, you know, and I, I don't really want to say naive, but I just wasn't really accustomed to what was going to be next. And therefore it's like, no, I just want to focus on my sport. I don't want to be thinking about what life without my sports going to be like, but with anything we have to plan. And it doesn't mean that you have to have everything figured out, but you have to have the tool set, um, to be able to handle these transitions that you have and what i've really come to realize and and this has been the feedback from a lot of people as well too it's like this is just one transition in our lives there's going to be many other things when you have kids when you get married when you know there may be some you know financial circumstances within your family it could be things that happen with your family like all these different things and sometimes it's even when you move up the career ladder too and you accept a higher position that's also a transition so having this tool set you know, and, and skill set and really a game plan, which is what I teach with Rebranded Athlete, is having this game plan of knowing like how you're going to face these transitions. And so the, the feedback's been, been, you know, better than I could have even imagined, especially with the podcast. My, my goal with my podcast as well is just to get, you know, athletes on there telling their stories because I felt like I was the only one going through it at the time. And I don't want any other athlete to have that, that feeling and hearing other athletes in their stories, because we all have a unique story, but what we have in common is we are, we all went through that identity loss. We all went through that transition. And so what I believe too, is not being a former athlete, not being a retired athlete. I really don't like those labels, although I have to use them sometimes to explain what I do, <laughs> but instead like where the whole concept of rebranded athlete came from, it's like, we are not leaving that athlete behind. You're going to take that athlete of who you are, that identity, and you're going to apply it. You're going to rebrand it, repurpose it into this next phase, this next season of your life. And ultimately have that same sense that you had on the court, the field. I want every athlete to be able to feel that again in this next chapter of their life. Because like me, I, I thought I, you know, life would never get as good as being a college athlete. Although those yeah. were some of the greatest <laughs> times, you know, exactly. I, I thought life would not get any better. <laughs> Man, you, you, these are, matter of fact, these are Dr. Jewels. They're not just regular Jewels. <laughs> this is Jules. educated. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jewels. So what you just talked about is absolutely exactly what I want to do or the purpose for this podcast. You know, a lot of people, especially in our age group, um, as far as when we came up and grew up, they're still young minded and uh, influenced by social media personnel, personalities, actors, uh, musicians, athletes, what have it be. But these serious conversations are what need to be had and and you can learn a lot from, like you said, the experience of these ex-athletes. And we're all experiencing these different transitions and different problems. And, you know, learning uh, that you're not the only one going through it or how someone maneuvered through these obstacles are really beneficial in life and helping out the next generation as well. So I right. truly appreciate you, you know, mentioning that uh, because that's exactly what we want to do here on Jarrell's Journal as well. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, that's the, the next generation is the wave of the future, you know, mm -hmm. so we have to, and, and, and in the same sense, you know, if there was somebody, you know, older than me during that time that, you know, could have shared those stories, I think I would have had a different outlook you yes. know, on, on what life after sports would be like. Now, my, my next question would be, we're both educators or uh, went into the education field as well. How was that transition as far as, when you actually got into your career field in education versus being an athlete, was that a culture shock for you getting in there? And how was that journey? Uh, because you, you've seen it on two different levels. You've seen it as an educator and as an administrator. So I just wanted to see if you could share that uh, with the viewers as well. You know, that I look back that first year of teaching when I so I, I did a lot of like substitute teaching and part-time stuff before I had my actual classroom. But when I got that, 
actual classroom of mine, it was a big deal to me. Um, and it was a big deal because I felt, number one, I felt like any new teacher. And those of you who are educators out there, you will never forget your first year teaching. It is just one of those things where, you know, there's so many um, emotions. There's so many things because you're you're in it to save the world. You know, you're you're there because you want to make a difference with your kids, but you don't know everything. And so it's frustrating. You're spending, you know, 12 plus hours a day just trying to learn everything. And I think what was difficult for me was that I had to begin again at a beginner level. And so as an athlete, you know, you, I worked my way up. I became very good at my craft. And now here was something, although I went to school for it, like we talked about, it's very different in the textbook compared to the real life <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> it's so, real for real. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so that part was, was tough for me. But after I, you know, got my feet wet and, you know, within the first, after the first half of the year, I finally began to really settle in and I had some great mentors. I had people, you know, to help me out. Of course, my family, you know, because everybody was educators. I think part of it too is I felt like I had to live up to that standard, you know, because I was like Ernie's daughter or I was Pam's niece, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I had to live up to that expectation and I was the only one putting that pressure on myself. And what I also saw quickly is that I was different and it wasn't because I was just, you know, Sarah, that, you know, that tall teacher on campus who still looks athletic or, or whatnot. I was different in the sense of, you know, I'd see problems or situations and I'd want to help out. I'd want to help solve that problem. And I wanted to, you know, like bring different things to the table. And so by my second year of teaching, that's when I really came out of my shell and I started to take on more responsibilities. I became a lead teacher on campus. And in fact, people started to kind of lean into me <laughs> for guidance and support, even though it was just my second year. But I attribute that to what I learned as an athlete. And, and again, it's that skill set that comes through. Even though I hadn't been in the classroom very long, I came already with leadership skills. I was coachable. I knew how to build relationships with people. And ultimately, I knew what it took to set goals and to succeed. And okay. so that's kind of what I saw as a teacher. And then same thing as a principal. It was crazy, too, because I looked around and I saw the, the principals and the administrators that were being very successful had an athletic background or they came from that sense like they were doing something different than other people and that's actually what kind of sparked my whole um, thought process when i started writing my dissertation i was first of all looking at um, administrators and how their schools outperformed others that were not and then i you know make a long story short i ended up having to do a different study just because i had gotten the a full-time principal job at the time and that a qualitative study was going to take me forever so i looked at a different venue but um you know it's just you just you begin to see that you're different and i think this goes in any job that you have even when i was a bartender i was different too i just i worked harder i hustled you know all these different things that we just do as <laughs> as uh, as athletes Oh, uh, that wasn't for you. That was for Mrs. Uh, future Doctor Elaine Clegg, who's a principal at my a dean and principal at my school. So I have a question oh, for nice. you. She said we'll love to have you at our school. Great example of being coachable. Oh, awesome. Th thank so, you, <laughs> Mrs. Ms., uh, Doctor Clegg. Doctor Lepe is also uh, familiar with restorative justice. Mm -hmm. This is my first time at the school that I'm at now ever using it, but it's very uh, important now. I really love it, actually. Uh, it's something I can do all the time. Um, I can redirect behaviors and all that. How was that beneficial to you? And can you tell the viewers who don't know what restorative justice, uh, what that is as well? Yeah, so I was definitely a big proponent of that as an administrator. So restorative justice is basically it's like conflict resolution. Um, you know, it's really instead of just putting punishment there first for discipline, you're really looking at the big picture and, and showing, you know, kids how to solve problems. And it's not just like, OK, you did this, you messed up. Here's your consequence. It's like, you know, how did this really make this person feel? You know, and what were your feelings behind it? So we get down to the deeper rooted part of it. And then um, I I always did, you know, sometimes I bring in the, the school counselor, just depending on, you know, what the issue was. But we would do restorative circles where everybody yeah. would get to say their piece because yeah. 
really that's what it is and that's why we see so much blowing up on social media is because people aren't having those face-to-face -face conversations and you know able to solve problems and work things out so um, i saw a lot of success with it um, the time that i was an administrator and it really prevents you know just having that you know hardcore punishment but really having kids own up to the responsibility of their actions and then being able to move forward from it and putting that human element to it as well, you know, because I, I, you know, for anybody, whether you're a kid or not, you know, behaviors happen for a certain reason. There's usually deeper rooted stuff that needs to be talked about. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. Now, I, I got one last question and we're going to leave the education field. Um, have you ran? In, I know you had to, but did you run into have you run into that little example of the little Sarah? Because I have a uh, first year teaching, I ran into a little Jarrell and I knew it was God giving payback to the things that I did while I was in school. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, definitely. I mean, in, in two different ways, I think, you know, as as another student that I had, you know, I've I've seen that that same person <laughs> and, you know, encourage them to, you know, be better or whatnot. Um, for me, I, I really couldn't get in trouble much. As you can imagine, my dad was actually my principal <laughs> at one point oh. in my life, so I couldn't get away with much. But, you know, I've seen I've seen examples of myself, whether it's been through a kid and then also through teachers as well, too, like how I struggled as much my first year as a teacher. I've also helped coach and mentor teachers as well, too. And there's one in particular where I really helped her through that first year. And, um, you know, it's one of my former colleagues. Uh, he still tells me he's like, man, she still asks for you, you know, how you're doing and, you know, how much that that first year, how how you helped her through it. And she still goes back to the things that, you know, you coached her through. So it's it's pretty cool to see that come full circle and that's what I love about giving back, you know, whether it's being an educator, uh, being a coach, you know, whatever we do, it's really giving back to those who were in your shoes at some point in time. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you've already explained to us the importance and what uh, viewers can find on the rebrand athlete. What is a common obstacle that you've noticed while interviewing athletes that we, they all find it like an issue in the transitioning process? Uh, have you found any commonalities as far as athletes are experiencing the same kind of trauma or same kind of obstacle? Yeah, you know, I a lot of the athletes I've worked with have had a great plan, you know, just like me, right? Like I had a plan. I knew I was going to go to the teaching credential program. Um, what I didn't share with you guys is that after I moved home, I couldn't afford to live down in Orange County anymore because it's too expensive. I moved back home with my parents had my whole graduation ceremony, all that kind of stuff. We had a big old party. And then two weeks later, I'm expecting to go and get my transcript out of the mailbox. And instead, I had a letter that said that I didn't technically graduate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, as you can imagine, that shook me uh, to the core because, you know, at the time, I really felt like a loser in that aspect because I didn't have anything more than a high school diploma and I couldn't even go to the teaching credential program, which was my plan. And then plus, I didn't have my sport anymore at the time. So mm. um, obviously, I made up that class and ended up graduating a little bit later on. But um, what's what's common that I see is that a lot of athletes have that plan of what's next, but what they're not equipped with is how to deal with that athlete identity piece mm -hmm. and how how you let go of something that was a part of you and for most elite athletes you're talking they they started playing their sport when you know they just started some of them they just started yeah. to walk you know and they, we're talking a, a young age in a long time for people to really be part of something and for me it was 14 years that i had played that sport and i was no longer sarah the volleyball player i was just sarah and so how 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 do we you know overcome that aspect and move forward into this next phase of our life without completely getting rid of it and like i explained before that's why i don't believe in those other labels and that's why i like the concept of how can we repurpose that into into something else so it really comes down to having a having some kind of a a, a like a tool bag i don't i wouldn't even say it's exactly having a game plan um which is it is what I teach within my program, but really having the, the tool set 
to be equipped to deal with these challenges that come head to head with you. And, and even for me, when I moved back home, I still had that athlete mentality that I had to go to the gym for like three plus hours a day because that's what I did when I was in college. <laughs> so having, you know, the way, the way of being able to transition into this next part, knowing that yes, your body type might change a little bit. You probably don't have to eat, you know, 4,000 calories because you're not burning <laughs> as much as you did before. All these little things that um, help in your transition. <laughs> No, that's absolutely right. I was the same way and, and then fell off. But you segue right into my next question. It was that identity piece. Like you said, uh, just me example, I played ball from six years old all the way up to after college. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was all I knew. What would you give? What would the advice be to that person that feels lost or fearful of, of disattaching from that identity? Because even I don't care if you didn't play professional on the big show. You know, there's different levels in baseball. We have minor league. We have independent league. Uh, they have overseas basketball. We have different levels. Even if it's college or high school, you're known as that athlete, especially if you just made it professional and you weren't a star. The fear of someone not seeing you as what you were and having to start over. What would you give that person or what kind of advice would you give that person? Well, definitely. Number one, you got to get to know who you are without your sport. You know, your sport is something you did. It does not define who you are. Right. So that's uh, that right there, I think, is the biggest takeaway is that it will always be a part of you, but it doesn't define you completely. Yes, you may find some, you know, essence of it within the work that you do or even how you um, go to the gym later on and do all these different types of things, but it doesn't define you. So one of the things I walk my clients through is really taking a look at their core values and determining, you know, who am I? What do I stand for? You know, who who am I as a person? What are the things that I value? And a lot of those things you learned as an athlete, you learn within your family and you have your own values yourself. So compiling that and using your core values as your GPS system or your roadmap really will help you to figure out what's next and not being afraid to try new things, you know, just because, you know, you've never tried it before and you go out and you try it once and you're not that good at it. It doesn't mean that you're never going to love that thing. You know, I can guarantee your sport that you played, you probably weren't really good the first time you did it, but after some practice and encouragement, you know, with different people, you got better at your craft, you know, and just like me with athlete transition. Yes, I was part of it personally, but I didn't know, all of the realms and scientific background and all these different things that actually come with the transition. So after practice and talking to people, like you get better at your craft and what you do. So I think that would be my biggest piece of advice is to get to know yourself. And sometimes that comes with getting quiet, you know, journaling, meditating, doing different things to be with just you and not just scrolling social media, you know, looking for the next thing, like, oh my God, what am I going to do next? Like you really got to do that inward work in order to come out on the other side, ready for that next, next phase of your life. That's big facts. Now, <laughs> and, and another thing, one, uh, and I'm going to touch on a, like a couple of topics within this question. Um, as athletes, uh, we're competitive, very competitive. Oh, yeah. By nature, in order to be good at your sport, you have to be competitive. You have to have that dog mentality. But when you transition that into your career afterwards, that can be a great thing because that's one reason we're getting hired for positions. But what aspect of competitiveness do we have to kind of restructure or kind of lose to be successful in your career change to rebrand yourself? I think part of it is just like in the game, you're not always going to win. Right. Like that's that's ultimately what it is. And I think reframing your mind that not everything has to be, you know, like it's the championship game either <laughs> you know, with that type of that type of competition. You know, you can definitely um, be the type that goes in, especially if you're new. Like one of my biggest pieces of advice, just like I did my first year teaching, like lay low and observe, you know, see what's going on and see where you can make an impact when you are ready to do so. But that's just the type of person I am. I've always kind of, you know, laid low and kind of seen the lay of the ground or lay of the land and then gone from there and see where I can, where I can make an impact and where I can make a difference or where I can see myself going, 
you know, because also, you know, we get so revved up and, you know, want to go right into like, yes, I'm going to do that next without really knowing what does that entail? You know, what is it really going to entail instead of just going for it? Because as athletes, if we, anything we put our minds to, we can accomplish it. Yeah. We can, that's just how we're wired. And it's always been that way. But I think really getting to know what you are setting yourself up for. And I think this is also what happens too to a lot of athletes as they transition out, we get you know, we have these degrees, like for example, me for education, right? It was my plan B. There are some athletes out there who literally just majored in eligibility, like whatever, <laughs> whatever it was, you know, let me just get my, you know, my degree so that I can play and stay eligible and weren't really thinking about what the long-term effects were going to be of that, um, that field that they were going to get in. And then they get into these jobs and they do really well because they're athletes and they have leadership skills and they have all these different things. And then they get backed into a corner in something that they're not really passionate about. And yes, it may make a lot of money, but it doesn't fulfill them and it doesn't give that, them that sense of work, just like the game or the sport did. So really doing your homework on that and giving yourself time to find out what lights you up as much as the game did because ultimately that's where, what we should be doing in life. We should be excited every day to get up and do what we love, just like we did as athletes. And don't get me wrong, Jarrell, because there were some days where it was like, oh my God, I do not want to go to practice, right? We all have those days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but for the majority, getting up and doing something you love day in and day out, that is truly in my, in my book, right, living a great life. Man, that's crazy. Uh, we had a joke, it was like the older people, I remember when I was about to go to college, I think it was like an older cousin or uncle that was like, don't be going in there and majoring in Simpsons 101. Uh, <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got no, some guys sure. on that. Um, <laughs> so my other question uh, for you was, you had a, a, a awesome interview where you uh, were talking about, and I found th th these kind of characteristics in myself. Uh, and I didn't even realize that I did this uh, because we were used to them. What could or what is an example of the difficulties of comparing yourself to others? Because as athletes, we're so, com you were, as we were talking about competitiveness, we compare ourselves to others, not realizing, hey, we're just getting into this career field. We can't compare ourselves to others. We have to, like you said, restart over, uh, slow down and, and build our way up. But we're, you know, we have a competitive nature about ourselves and asking why I, I know I can do this but why am I not at the level of that person or things like that? Uh, I wanted to see if you can expound on that conversation because I thought it was very important. Yeah. So it, it really comes with like everybody has their due time, like whenever it's going to be right. So I, I think it, it, it kind of goes back to what I said. It's like, you have to really lay low to the lay of the land and, and who are you to make an impact in what you're doing. And so just making sure that, you know, you're not, you're not beating yourself up because you're not where you think you should be at this point in time. Like it will come. And I think that's what I always loved about seeing as, as a supervisor and a manager, the people that would come in that are coachable. And that is, let me tell you guys, that is something that it doesn't matter if you are the seasoned veteran and you've been there 25, 30 years, as opposed to the newbie that's coming in that, you know, maybe only has a year or two of experience, but they are coachable. And that's that's a huge trait to have in any industry that you go into, because ultimately that is how not only organizations grow, but how you continue to grow as a person. Because if you are coachable, you are going to be able to help the team and the good of the team. And that's that's something that when I was a school principal, I was very, that's what I was known for, <laughs> team culture, um, you know, within my school site, because I never saw myself as higher than anyone else. And that was, even when I went in as, as a brand new teacher, like I never, I never saw myself, you know, even if I was a couple years in, like I never saw myself, you know, higher than a teacher that just came in. Like we were all on the same team striving for the same goals. So all of us needed to work together 
you know, in whatever capacity we could. And just like when I was a principal, you'd see me outside directing traffic, I was sweeping, mopping, whatever it would take. Mm -hmm. And that's just what you have to do. And I think that's the, the skill set that we bring as athletes to the table, because no matter what, we get the job done. Yeah. At the end of the day. Because I, I definitely see that in myself. I, I do it all the time. I'm like looking at other people like, Dang, I, I I have the same education. I know I can do it better than this, but you know, comparing myself to other people, I thought that you know, if I'm thinking that way, I can't be the only one that you know is going through that. So I thought that was right. an awesome episode that you guys have. And um, anybody watching, if you haven't seen it, please go check that out on Rebrand Athlete. Awesome episode. And then I have one last question for you, uh, Sarah. The difference when you're transitioning and rebranding yourself from being an athlete to in whatever career field that you choose, work ethic, uh, ethics inside of the workplace from a nine to five is a little bit different. What would, what kind of advice would you give an athlete transitioning about ethics in the workplace? <laughs> well, first of all, don't don't be surprised if people ask you what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to try to outperform everybody, you know, no matter what, what, what that job is. And I think that's just instilled in us as athletes is that, yeah. you know, we, we want to, we want to make things better. You know, we want to win ultimately that's kind of our mentality. And so we, you know, we're the ones that put in the hours, we stay later. Don't be, don't be upset because, you know, you see one of your colleagues that, you know, is just doing <laughs> the bare minimum, because if you expect everybody to be wired like you, you're going to set yourself up for disappointment. You know, that's first and foremost, there, there are going to be different people in the workforce that have, you know, different backgrounds or whatnot, but you are going to find very quickly which people are also the athletes, you know, or maybe a long time ago they were because they still have that that mindset as an athlete as they go through, um, you know, with whatever the endeavor is at, at your job or workplace. And I think what's also difficult too with the nine to five as an athlete is um, we're not accustomed really to being a in, into a cubicle, you know, from nine to five. And I think that's what's hard too is like we are so accustomed to being problem solvers, which I think that's why a lot of athletes make great entrepreneurs because they are solving problems and they're, you know, doing different things to bring things forth to the world. And sometimes it's really hard to, you know, feel like you are within a box. But mm -hmm. even if you're in a corporate job, find your place in the corporate in the corporate workplace. You know, be that shining star, be that example for people and make them wonder like, man, what is she on, on today? You know, she's on a good one because you care so much about what you're doing and you're bringing forward the same drive that you had as an athlete. So, yes, and you are going to get opportunities for leadership because they want people like athletes in those different types of roles. So don't don't be surprised if you move up qu quickly in the ranks, you know, and that's why you got to be very selective too about where you're going to end up and ask those questions. You know, if there's a position you're seeking, go ask people who are in those types of positions to see if it's something that really does align with you and it does fit within whatever type of lifestyle that you want to live. That's good advice. And uh, we got my boy, Eric, uh, just came in. I told him we're going to have to have you come back, uh, Dr. Sarah. Let, I'm just saying it on purpose just to make sure I got it right. <laughs> Lepe. Yeah. Lepe. <laughs> but uh, Eric is uh, always shout out my bro. He always show love. He's uh, played with the uh, the New York Jets. I told him we have to have him come oh, back nice. on here um, and tell us his transition because he would be a great example as well. Uh, yeah. Just he was able to maneuver. But um, before we leave out, Doc, I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to bring you up on the highlight. I wanted to see if you could just give me your name, uh, your brand, and tell them to tune in to Jarrell's journal. I'm going to use it as an excerpt. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. So I'm Dr. Sarah Lepe, also on, known on, as Coach. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to bring you up. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody. I'm Dr. Sarah Lepe, also known as Coach Sarah from Rebranded Athlete. And you have got to tune in to Jarrell's Journal. This is the episode, the place to be. This guy is always bringing the heat on these podcast episodes, live streams. So make sure you check it out. Man, you're awesome. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> <laughs>
man, <laughs> Tell me that on was, the fly here, man. <laughs> that was dope. I've, I truly, like I said, these weren't just jewels today. They were Dr. Jewels. Um, oh, anybody that, um, if you can do me one favor, share this information to anyone, any professional. It really doesn't have to be a, a ex athlete. This anybody uh, that's new in a profession, anybody that's not excelling in a profession, because they might be going through some mental issues that are holding them back that we were talking about today. Um, not even mental issues, just you know things uh, personally uh, where they feel like they should be somewhere else, and they can utilize this. Uh, share it to any AD that you have, any athlete that's transitioning out of college that may not be going professional or that is going professional. Anybody that can utilize this education, please share it. My replay viewers, share it. And uh, Doc, before you leave, can you let them know where we can catch you at on IG, all your uh, handles? Absolutely. Best place, place to catch me is on Instagram at Rebranded Athlete. Um, I'm also, I do have a Facebook page as well, Rebranded Athlete. And LinkedIn, you'll find me under Rebranded Athlete or uh, Sarah Lepe, S. Lepe. And I do have a podcast as well on all major platforms, the Rebranded Athlete podcast. We release every other week on Mondays and I have an archive of lots of conversations on there. So if you're just hearing me for the first time and you haven't checked out the podcast, I highly, highly recommend that you do. Um, I also will be launching here at uh, the by the end of April, a new opportunity for people to join the Rebranded Athlete Academy as well. So if you are a former athlete or about to be one, uh, whether you're college or professional athlete, love to have you come on board so I can help you through your transition. And as always, if there's anything I can support you with, feel free to reach out. And Jarrell, thank you so much for having me on here. It has been you, you know so you're my fun. girl. So uh, <laughs> like people, this is my this is my girl. We linked already. So you're gonna see a lot more of Doc on here. Uh we're gonna definitely gonna work in the future. And as you can see, my Absolutely. school wants to have they want to have you uh come speak and 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 tune in so we can <laughs> We're probably going to uh, be talking sooner than later. <laughs> nice. I'd lo love to meet the team. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I truly appreciate you taking the time and um, joining us, like I said, all the way from uh, L.A. Uh, just to kick it with us and kick this knowledge uh, with us. I truly appreciate you, Doc. Anytime, Jarrell. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No problem. So if you hold on just a second, I'm going to get up with you in two seconds, okay? Okay. Once again... Awesome show, awesome knowledge as always. Like I said, please share this to anyone that you think this vital. Uh, this is vital information uh, that can utilize this uh, because, like I said, this resonated with me, so I know it resonates with someone else. So tag this, you know, whoever can utilize this. Um, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. We got some dope things coming up. Like I said, we talk about all things. We talk about education, healthcare. Uh, intelligence, sports as always, ethics and decision making. We got a sex therapist coming up in the uh, next couple months because sex is about, you know, a part of marriage. And if that ain't right, your house ain't right. So it's going to be dope. She's uh, uh, actually has a uh, show out on HBO. And I'm going to tell you who that person is. We um, have uh, uh, analysts, a draft analyst from CBS Sports coming through uh, in the next two weeks. And I'm going to drop and tell you who that is. So we got some dope people coming through, dope episodes. Uh, just stay locked in. I appreciate all you guys, and I will see you very soon. So stay blessed and have a beautiful day. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now this is your journey in your real journal. Say it now, yeah, that's right. Go. Nothing less but the best. Hey, hey, journey in your real journal. Say it now, stand up. All over the globe. Journey in your round journey two six in city stands up two six this your journey in your round journal let's go bring it with me the source of your information created to cover all sorts of sports and many players in the making there is none other like it from the majors to the minors it's tailored to be your lightning to politics with the globe and unfolding athletic platform for the world to behold hey.
Stay tuned as I cover your thoughts and views. Innovating a structure to stand taller for the player of the day. Make your way for tomorrow. Consistent content distributed with quality. Your passions of the youth get used, creating prodigies. The cornerstone for the call lens and interviews. Opinions, countdowns, trivia, the latest news. Bearing gifts, so this for me to you. Guaranteed to be what you don't want to miss. So have a seat, cause I'm back.